afternoon. I'm here with a good friend, Andy Johnston, Hall of Fame coach from Clemson, teammate of mine in Clemson too many years ago to, to remember. That's for sure. <clears throat> anyway, before, I want to thank you for watching my YouTube channel. And if you like it, please hit the like button and do subscribe as I have a lot of great videos coming up. Today, we're talking about the forehand. You may recall I just posted a great video with Mike Sprengelmeyer, another fantastic coach. Mike has his own methodology and word pictures to get you through the most important shot in the game. And there's a reason why the forehand is probably more important than the backhand. And you're going to listen to Andy Johnson talk about that, and then Andy's going to break it down into the various facets of how to hit a very good, pretty much conventional forehand. Andy, take it over. Well, I just want to tell you a few tips that you know can help you. I, I taught my son Noah, who's doing well. He was one of the nation. I'm sure the boys 14s, and he's 15 now. But what he talk about is a lot of it's just wrist discipline. Your wrist is the steering wheel of the shot. So when you hit your forehand, I'm a believer of when I come, when I take your backswing, I'll go this way. I lay my wrist back here. And then from here, it's pretty simple. If you just thought low to high is great, but what you want to do is get a little bit better. You want to use your base, and your base is. You want to plant this foot, which I call the anchor foot. You want to step in with a wide base. That gets your body, your weight transferred. Plus, if I'm here, my hitting area is from heel to heel, so I can be early or late. Plus, a lot of people, what's the problem they do? They pop up. Back Andy, do me a favor. Turn sideways, please, as if the ball's coming from me here. Okay. And so, so demonstrate right that, if you will. So, so when I step in here and I plant, if I step here, now I can jump up. I've transferred my weight, and now all i got to do when I'm here, I'm a believer of let your hips and legs, larger muscle groups, hit the shot. So when I take, when I come here, when I turn my hip, it brings my racket in front, front, I make like an L, I pull the ball and push it through, then I release. And that release is the critical part. We all get tight. I always say hit 10, 20, 30 acceleration, but when we get tight, what do we do? We go 10, oh, ah, ah, 10, 20, 20, and the ball goes deep. Okay, so Andy, why do, why do you hit maybe 60, 40? Why did Federer, Joker hit 70, 30? Talk about the difference in the percentage of forehands versus backhands. Well, you know, if you look at most of the pros, and, you know, I'm old school, and I grew up with, you know, the old guys. Every, nobody had two handers. A board came along. So most of us at my age in the 60s, we all had, like, a lot of chip backhands and, you know, topspin. But the thing is, the, your, your shoulder is not strong enough, like a high backhand, which everybody has trouble with, higher shot in tennis, to hit it hit it with, with enough power. Where your shoulder, your chest, and your shoulder, everything here, you use a lot more muscle to hit your forehand. So what I do, I run around my, my back and hit my forehand because that's how I'm going to dictate. You know, Federer was the master of it. He probably hit forehands from the single sideline on the backhand side. But I try to play 60-40, 6% forehands running around. Plus, when I run around, I'm semi-open. And what I like about semi-open, you don't know where I'm hitting. I can drag the ball, go down the line, or I can pop my left hip and go to this corner. If I go linear, you know where I'm going because I can't go over this way because I fight my body. So okay. that's what I really like. Okay, about what I, I'm just going to hit you three balls, Andy. Okay. Just slide back a little bit. And I want you to demonstrate, demonstrate again, the early preparation with yep. the laid back wrist. Yep. And you're going to either, with, you know, your base, etc. I want you to go through it. Okay, here we go. Here it is. I lay my wrist back, my base, then I come through. Good. So if you want to go down the line. Walk through here, I come through, and then I release and I come up. And the follow through, I don't care where you go. You know, here's the thing about the follow through. People oh, you go over your shoulder. You don't. People say catch the follow through. Okay, fine. I've seen a lot of great pointers. They follow through, my, like over here, just at their bicep. So just because you're follow through in here, if you're not missing that, that's fine. You know, you know, the doll sometimes you see him follow through over his head. But just get what's comfortable for you. But the main thing is laying your wrist back, contact point here. Then you have one, two, three balls. You hold the ball in your racket, then release the wrist. But as you said, the, the most important thing is really that wrist, the laid back wrist. And Mike Springlemeyer says the same thing very similarly. Lay it back and almost maintain that throughout the swing. But the very end, you do Yeah, well, that's why a, a little bit of finish. Terrible, like team trying to come back to a portro. It's almost a kiss of death because all your power is really wrist pop. If you look at my serve, how do I get power of my serve? I pop my wrist. How do I get power on my forehand? I pop my wrist. How do I get power on my volley? I lay my wrist back, I pop my wrist and stop. So everything with power is from your wrist. Yep, so that's why the wrist is so critical. And wrist discipline is critical. Okay. Number one, I want to thank Andy for this first video. <laughs> You're welcome. We're going, to, we're going to do another video. In the second video, we're going to break down the, the components of the forehand. Okay, remember this. I wrote the book called Tennis Life. Andy Johnson has a chapter in my book. 
His son's a chapter in my book, and his former wife. Yeah, there you go.